This podcast is brought to you by the self-publishing formulas Facebook Ads for Authors Premium Course. Registration opens on the 3rd of June for a limited time. Hello and welcome to podcast number 15 from the self-publishing formula. Two writers, one just starting out, the other a bestseller. Join James Blatch and Mark Dawson and their amazing guests as they discuss how you can make a living telling stories. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Yeah, number 15 in the list of self-publishing formula podcasts. We hope it's going to be a very long list. It gets well into three, maybe even four figures in the years to come. And it's the exciting early days for us. Every single time we do a podcast, we put one together, Mark, we always think how is this going to change a reader? How is this going to change a writer's life? How is this going to make things easier for them, better for them, give them value? And today we're delighted to say that we've got a uh, an interview. It's actually not a long interview, 15 minutes or so, with a student of Mark's premium course, the Facebook Advertising for Authors course, uh, who talks about the year, the well, not even a year, the three months that he's had that has changed his life. And it's very exciting. And the reason that we're talking to Adam Croft today is because uh, you will by now know, I expect, that Mark's course is in one of its periodic periods of enrolment to onboard new students. It happens a couple of times a year. It's only the third time we've done this, Mark, we've taken on a, a clutch of new students, and it's exciting. Yeah, it's we've already had um, lots and lots of people sign up, we, and we've got and there is a limit on how many people we can take um, on the course. Yeah, so it's open for I think it's until uh, well, we're gonna, it, James? it's about the, the about the fourteenth, but we do reserve the right to close it early. And people should understand that we're a small company. There's three of us. We have a couple of helpers uh, dotted around the world who help us, but um, commercially we can't take on ten people. Um, and have them there the whole time, which would allow us to take on open-ended numbers of students. So we take on a number that we can support. And in the weeks to come, there is inevitably an upsurge in support. And that works really well for us as a company. And um, so there's a reason for that. But I would expect us to go to about the 13th, 14th um, around then. That's what we're planning to at the moment anyway. Yes. So if people are inter- interested in, in that, then they should go to selfpublishingformula.com for details of um, how they can sign up uh, and what's included in the course plus things like testimonial videos and and then listen to, to Adam's story because he he has um, had as you as you said James he's had a, a life-changing year going from uh, making I think twenty thousand dollars a year last year to projecting 1.5 million dollars this year and that that is um, almost exclusively because he is completely nailing Facebook ads right now he, he's he's doing this extremely well um and his story is an interesting one. And so I'd say just listen to that. And then also at the end of it, if you have other questions that you don't think were answered or other things you'd like to hear Adam's thoughts on, um, Adam and I are going to be doing a webinar. Um, at uh, It's on the 7th of June at 10 p.m. London time, 5 p.m. New York, 2 p.m. L.A. And you, you'll definitely need to register for that because we do expect it to be um, uh, quite a hot ticket and the software that we use, GoToWebinar, only allows us to um, register a thousand people. So um, definitely get on that um, as soon as you can. If you want to register, you go to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash Adam, um, and then you'll get, you'll get reminder emails from both GoToWebinar and from me just to, to remind you when we will be going live. But that that's going to be really interesting. Um, yeah, he's got Adam's got loads and loads of uh, really good tips, and, and we hope to pass some of those along. Well, he's somebody who picked it up quickly, really has made it work. And it's not just about the advert and the composition of that, it'll be loads of little interesting bits that you'll take away from it, but it's also about the type of book you read and a uh, type of book you write, um, which he's been thinking about as well as in a commercial sense as a writer, not just as somebody who's perhaps setting out to win the Booker Prize, but somebody setting out to make a business out of it. Um, so we'll get mm. to his interview now. I mean, I should say also that I one of my jobs in SPF is to look out for students who've posted interesting comments or their results onto Facebook, and I immediately get on to them and uh, arrange a little Skype interview. And so far, everyone said yes, and I've uh, people are obviously all around the world, and people like Riley Edgewood, I think, is in DC, and recently been speaking to well, we had John Logston in the past down in North Carolina, and. Charlotte Bird, who's in Southern California, a couple of them recently. And then I, I contacted um, Adam 
And I said to him, uh, so, slightly wearily, I said, well, you know, what time zone are you in, Adam? Thinking, what time am I going to be up? And he said, well, I'm in Flittick, which is about 20 miles away from where I'm sitting, where I live. So I hot-footed it down there, and for once on the podcast, spoke to somebody actually living and breathing in front of me. <laughs> yeah, it makes a difference. Well, I've actually stepped out of uh, Self Publishing Formula Podcast HQ, that glittering building, um, and uh, joined the real world. And I'm in a, I guess it's a, a bit of a fairly typical writer's situation, which is we're in your front room, and I'm with Adam Croft. Hello, Adam. Hello. Thank you very much indeed for uh, for um, allowing us into your house and chatting to you. And what we're very excited about is you have in a fairly short period of time, become a bit of a star in the self-publishing world. <laughs> Just tell us where your book is today on Amazon. Um, today, when I looked this morning, it was number 16 in the overall chart in the UK, which is uh, it's pretty amazing, actually. I think the highest I'd got to before then, just through you know purely organic means, was about 1,000. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty phenomenal. And this has all happened with one, one of you. You've written, this is your ninth book, but this yeah. has all happened with one of your books since December. Is that right? It is, yes. Yeah, I've been uh, plodding away for five years <laughs> and had, uh, had eight books out before that. And, you know, they'd, they'd done fine. And I, you know, had been maybe making a living from it, just about. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd had this idea for a book for quite a long time, actually. And I'd I'd done parts of it, and I couldn't quite nail the ending. And I couldn't make things work. And I thought, you know what? Is it worth it for you know for what I'm making out of it? Is it is it worth you know just going on and, and bidding that one and moving on to another one? And um, yeah, I started doing the the Facebook uh, adverts course and. I thought, you know what, that, that book idea that I very nearly binned might just be marketable and sellable through through adverts. And uh, I finished it and fired some ads at it. And yeah, the rest is history. So you started seeing success early. And I know people always want to know about the detail of this because they're learning themselves. So just explain how you you saw the success and how you reacted to that. Well, Well, pretty much immediately within the first couple of days, I started to see that whatever I was spending on adverts was, was doubling in sales. And I thought, well, logically, if I'm spending £10, £20 on adverts and I'm doubling it, if that principle applies at higher levels, I'd rather double £1,000 than double £10. So I started to scale up um, quite slowly. Um, I mean, I tend to recommend and most other people recommend no more than 50% of the existing budget. So if you're spending £10 a day, you only raise it up to 15 If you're spending 50 you only raise it to 75 And that's when you do that you know, a couple of times a week at the most, maybe three times a week. Um, so it's a case of very gradually scaling it up and then going, OK, this is still working, adding in some new audiences and essentially spending what I possibly can on it. Because um, it's, you know, even now I've scaled it up to the point where I'm spending a thousand pounds a day and I'm still doubling what I'm spending. So the only reason I'm not going any higher is because I'll have run out of money by the time the first uh, royalty check comes in, which isn't great. Yeah, that's the, this is the thing that lots of people are familiar with when yeah. you do start selling books is there's quite a lag between selling the book on Amazon and actually seeing the cash. There is, and you know, that's not too much of a problem once you're rolling and going and selling the same source of amount each month. It doesn't make too much difference. But when you've got such an enormous jump from, I mean, I was selling about um, something like 20, 30 copies a day, and I'm now you know, at the point where I'm selling four figures a day, it, there is that big lag, especially when you're, like say, so you've got that outlay of Facebook adverts. I mean, Amazon might pay a couple of months late. You know, that's not... Not too much of a problem, but Facebook have a nasty habit of taking the money for the adverts the same day. So yeah. that's uh, yeah, that's when it starts to become a bit of a cash flow thing, um, which again is where your your business mind has to come in. And you know, where you keep saying all the time that if you're to be successful, especially with self publishing, you need to be not just a writer, not just have that creative side, but to have that business and entre entrepreneurial side as well. So yeah, things like managing the cash flow and having the confidence as well in actually seeing those results coming in, you know, looking at the sales throughout the day, throughout the week and going, yeah, it's doubling its money. I'm going to be getting this money in a month or two. So, you know, I'm happy to, you know, put myself in uh, quite considerable debt in the meantime. <laughs> so we're talking 40 or 50 grand's worth of debt. And the, we're, to, we're in the UK, as people uh, can probably tell, that's pounds. So times that by 1.5 for dollars you you may be in 
you, you may have invested seventy five thousand dollars. Yeah, I without remember. seeing any return yet. Yeah, well, I mean, the returns there on paper, but in terms of actually being in my bank account, no. So yeah, a, a lot on credit cards and um, and yeah, kind family members who have uh, who've also looked at the results and gone, yeah, okay, I don't mind having a having a piece of this. So yeah, I've had to um, yeah scrabble around, but yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I when I'm at Amazon payday, if you like my first payday from this book, I want to be at the point where as that money hits my account, my last penny went out the second before, because that means I've put everything I can towards it and it's doubling everything that I've got essentially, which is what I you know, want to do. It, it, it makes sense. Obviously, you know, a hundred percent ROI, if that's relative and is scalable, which it has proven to be, then it just makes sense to spend as much as you can and get as much as you can. The old expression of make hay while the sun shines, you know, strike while the iron's hot. There's a whole load, load of very wise exp- expressions that are not by accident mm. about seizing the moment. Carpe day. And we could go on, couldn't yeah, we? Yeah. Um, I was just thinking there, I just wonder if there's a market or there's a, there's a, there's a way for, for crowdfunding a successful author in their early days, because they, this is a significant issue. You've been, um, you've got a few credit cards. Not everyone has space mm. on credit cards. You've, you've been lucky enough to have some family who've, been invested it would be frustrating in the extreme for you wouldn't it to have run out of money early on at this point yes yeah i mean i you know in terms of actual money i didn't really have any money really before i started i, I fortunately had a good credit rating and that's <laughs> and, that, and that, that's about it and a lot of writers obviously especially if you've been doing it for a while you probably won't have a lot of money you know most most of us don't so yeah that is tricky and i did look at the idea of crowdfunding and I thought you know that's always my kind of backup plan if you know if I really needed more if I couldn't get the money from family if I couldn't get it on the credit cards I had thought about looking at something like crowdfunding or business angels and things like that but um, you know the idea of actually giving away a portion of my business was uh, was not something I was all that keen on especially seeing as it's such a, a volatile career anyway and it's something that's changed so massively in the last couple of months I yeah, three months ago, I couldn't have foreseen where I am today. And if I had, I might have thought that'd be five, ten years down the line, at, you know, at least. So I don't know what I'm going to be in three months' time. You know, there could be film deals and and all sorts of things. You just don't know. It's uh, it's, it's such a quick changing thing. And as you know, so I've been going for five years and eight books, and you know, it's all of a sudden that ninth one just to just to go and, and take off. It's it's not something you can predict. Um, it's a book that I had had the confidence in once I, you know, really got my my hands around the marketing side of things, and I thought, you know what, if if one book is going to go, it's going to be this one. So it's you've got to have that business mind, and you've got to have that confidence, and be willing to to take the plunge. Really, yeah. I mean, just to put some of these more flesh on the details of this uh, story since December, you're I think 17 in the overall Amazon chart today. Mm-hmm. Your sales predictions for this year, if you look at the big gross figures, you don't personally realize because, of course, it doesn't take into account the investment advertising and it doesn't take into account Amazon's cuts. But nonetheless, it's the sales that you have generated. You're probably looking at seven figures this year. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of um, what it's done in the last two or three months and projections for 2016, it's it's well on course to sell more than a million pounds worth of books. $1.5 million. Yes. Yeah. Which is just phenomenal considering... You know, in a in a year before that, I might have done, you know, twenty thousand pounds worth or thirty thousand pounds worth, and it's now, you know, that's now coming through in in a fortnight or a month, and it's 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 insane, really. Well, let me say congratulations, Adam, <laughs> to you because I know that's what a lot of the people listening yeah. to the podcast will be thinking. Well done, you, good on you, and there's the motivation and reasons for us to to continue. So let's let's get some top tips from a recently created master in this field what would be your main tip for somebody who's who would love to follow in your footsteps you you i think you need to be honest with yourself as well sometimes you need to think i mean i advertised on facebook for for a couple of months before launching this book and i was you know uh, advertising different books from my back catalog and they some of them worked okay some of them didn't work at all and it was when i actually managed to kind of um get my head out of my own backside and think, you know what, maybe the problem isn't with the advertising, maybe the problem isn't with the marketing, maybe it's the book that I'm advertising, it isn't quite right. And that's when I kind of thought, you know what, let's flip this on its head. Rather than saying I'm going to write a book and then market it through Facebook advertising, I thought, what the readers want, what's the hook they want? And that's when I remembered that I had this book 
And I thought, you know what, that's got a really good hook on it. Um, so I, I, once I wrote it for the marketing purpose, but I, I had it there and I thought that was one that's, that's really going to work. So my, my, my biggest tip really would be, you, you can't be precious. You've some point you might have to say, you know what, this isn't the right book to be advertising. It's not the right book to be marketing. So you might have another book in your back catalogue or an idea or something, or you, you know you might even go the full hog and actually write one for the, you know for the purposes of it being commercial. And the books now that I was trying to market beforehand on Facebook advertising, all the money I spent on advertising them, they're now selling more copies of those when I'm not advertising them because of the sell through from people who've read my most recent one and then gone back and gone, oh, look, this chap's written another eight books. Let's, uh, let's go and buy some of those. So it's, I would say you've, you've got to look at, you know, the three prongs of it, having your business approach, getting your advertising right as well, and actually looking at the product that you're selling because even the best marketing in the world won't sell a bad product. Yeah. So that's a really good point. And it's, it's, I suppose, moving on to slightly advanced business and marketing theory but it does happen all the time in switched on businesses that rather than them sitting there thinking what is it we do and how do we market it they look at how advertising works how people work and then they back design a product for that and i know even electronics companies will do that Mm. they'll sit there thinking what's going to look good on a poster Mm. in the underground can we now in the subway can we now design that product and that's effectively what you've done to an extent you've looked at what works well in advertising Mm. And and then gone backwards with the tail wagging dog. Yes, yeah. I, I went a step further for my next book, the one that I'm I'm writing at the moment. And the first thing I wrote before I even had the title, before I really fleshed out the plot, the first thing I wrote was the Facebook advert for it. And then I, you know, to try and distill the plot down into a good advert, and thought, yeah, that that that's a, another book that will sell. And then gone back and, and fleshed out the book and, and, and the plot from there. So it, it is a case of sometimes having to think outside the box. And I know as writers, we're very keen on going, I've got a great idea for a story. We write it and then we go, right, what do we do with it now? But you have to remember that, especially if you're self-publishing, it's it's a business. And you've got to think of the customer that's the reader. And you have to essentially give them what they want. And especially in genre fiction, it's, you know, that's what it's set up for. That's what crime and, and romance and erotica and all of that are set up for. You know, we're not out there to write literary masterpieces that, um, you know, we're immensely proud of, but no one's going to buy. We're there selling a product and that's, that's what the books are. And, and again, it's that, um, it's that thing of having to, you know, get my head out of my backside and realize that, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, it's not about being a literary master. It's about, actually having that product and selling it. It reminds me a bit of Alan Partridge, the, car- <laughs> the caricature English comedian played by Steve Coogan, uh, who's a t- failed TV presenter and pitches a load of ideas. And one of them is a partridge among the pigeons. Yeah. And the worry producer says, well, well, what is that? And he goes, I don't know, it's just a title. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm sure we could do something. Youth hustling with Chris Eubank. Yeah, exactly. Know. Cooking in prison. <laughs> um, yeah, so the Americans have no idea what we're talking about now. But the point is, I suppose, you could come up with a great film poster and a great tagline for a film and then write the script. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I've been trying to do more and more rather than you know, writing my book and then going, right, let's find the hook. Let's get the tagline out of this and let's find out how it's going to sell. It's, it's to do it the other way around. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, as much as I love writing, I'm doing it for a reason. And that's because it's my job. And that's because that's what I want to do. It's what I love doing. And it, it needs to pay the mortgage. It needs to pay the bills. And for that reason, you've got to sell books. I mean, you know, not all of us are a Lord Byron. We can just keep writing things and, you know, have, have the money coming in from elsewhere. It's, you know, we've, we've got to make a living out of it as well. Yeah, well, you're going to probably pay your mortgage off this year. Well, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, I hadn't, hadn't quite uh, planned on it on it going that far this quickly, but yeah, yeah. Well, we should just talk about the books themselves. Mm. Um, so let's talk about this particular book that's given you all the success since December. Just tell me, uh, a, a, well, give me the elevator pitch. Uh, the elevator pitch is, could you murder your wife to save your daughter? Um, book's called Her Last Tomorrow. It's um, essentially focuses on uh, Nick Connor. It's told in the, his, his first person point of view. He's getting his child ready for school. His wife's got a high flying job in London. She leaves early. He's left. He's a writer. He's left getting the kids ready in the morning. Um, he puts his daughter in the back of the car, nips back into the house to, to grab something he's forgotten, comes back out 30 seconds later and she's gone. Um, they call the police, panic ensues, the normal sort of thing. And uh, he then gets a, a, a message from the kidnapper saying he can have his daughter back, but he has to murder his wife. 
and and it kicks off from there. Intrigue. I mean, that's brilliantly intriguing and a great hook. And uh, obviously, you have a slightly disturbed mind. <laughs> well, well, yes. <laughs> like yeah. all writers. Yeah. I uh, when people ask what I do for a living, I say I invent people and then murder them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and up until this point, um, you are a crime, thriller, genre, writer. Uh, has there been something different about the first eight books? Then? Yes, yeah, there have been um, four in each of the two series that I write. Um, one of them is the, the Knight and Culverhouse crime thrillers, which are down the kind of the, um, the Mark Billingham, Ian Rankin, Peter James kind of um, route in terms of following two, two British detectives who uh, investigate... Um, far too many murders happening in a, in a small British town, to be quite honest with you. And the the other one's the Kempston Hardwick Mysteries, which is um, a series of more traditional murder mystery novels, which is actually a bit of a, a pastiche and um, a bit of a nod towards the kind of the golden age of detective fiction, your Agatha Christie's, your Dorothy L. Sayers, and actually a very tongue-in-cheek um, approach to those, much in a way that kind of Jonathan Creek did um, on the TV, I think. Um, and... Yeah, this was the first book, this most recent one, that wasn't actually in in a series. It was a, a complete standalone book. And for that reason, I thought that's one of the reasons why I didn't actually finish it and I didn't put too much too much thought into it. When I got stuck, I didn't persevere with it quite as much because I thought, well, yeah, you follow the old um, advice that everybody gives. Always write a series, you know, standalone books don't sell. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite glad that I ignored that. <laughs> And, and got it finished because, as you say, the elevator pitch side of things is, is is what sells it. You know, people don't care whether it's in a series or not if the if, if the um, if the tagline is that strong. And do you think now that each book you write, you I know you're already on to your next book, and I've already heard the elevator pitch for that, which is also brilliantly intriguing. Do you think now this is it? This is probably the way you're going to go. Um. I, I think so. I mean, I, I still will be writing in my other series. I've got the next few books planned out in each of those series already. And but the psychological thrillers are something that I I love reading and I love writing and I've, I've wanted to do for a long time. And it's not massively different from what I do now. Essentially, it's the same the same crime stories, the same crime thrillers, but told from the point of view of the people that are actually living in that moment rather than from the the police. Um, the investigation side of things. So it's not so different a genre, it's just from a different viewpoint. And yeah, that's something that I've always, always wanted to sort of do a bit more of. And yeah, I'm just really glad that it's, um, it's, it's proven successful. So yeah, I will be writing a lot more psychological thrillers as well. So let me ask you a little bit on, on behalf of those of us who are sort of starting out in writing and I'm writing my first book at the moment I know lots of other people listening to the podcast are the earliest stage of their careers um how do you discipline yourself how do you structure your day how what sort of advice and tips do you have to to people about how you become a writer you get into the habit of writing you just have to there's no there's no real secret to it it's um whenever anybody says oh i've always wanted to write a book how do i go about doing it i say the same six words it's bum on seat fingers on keyboard there's there's no other secret to it. I I give myself a minimum word count that I need to spend, uh, need to write each day. The reason I do that, again, purely commercial reasons, I know what date my next book will be finished. I can plan ahead releases, things like that. And I know how many books I'm going to write this year because I know how many words I write each day. And I know... How many is that? Uh, aiming for six this year. Six words a day? Uh, no, <laughs> six books. <laughs> six books a day. So how many yeah. words a day is that? Uh, well, sometimes it is six. But uh, yeah, 2,000 words minimum uh, okay. a day. Um, but that's my absolute minimum. I don't often stop there. Quite often I'll, um, you know, that might take me uh, might take me an hour and I might you know, carry on and, and blitz through or sometimes I can be well, Watch there. Countdown. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I can be there at 11 o'clock at night, still on you know, 1,400 words. Yeah. It's sometimes like getting blood out of a stone. But you have to sit down and you still have to write. You can't go, oh, actually, I don't think I'll be able to get any writing done today. I'm not in the right frame of mind. Um, you know, in any other job, if you turned up and said, oh, if you're a bricklayer and you said, oh, I'm not in the right frame of mind to uh, to mix up this uh, this cement today or, oh, no, I'm not really in the right frame of mind to muck out the pigs. I mean, you, you know, you'd be you'd be fired instantly. So you've you've got to treat it as a job. You've got to treat it as a business and you've got to get up in the morning at whatever time you've got to sit down and you've got to write. I mean, I know if you've got a full-time job and you've got children, it's tricky. Um, but even if you're getting up an hour earlier or going to bed an hour later or, you know, 
you got to cut something out of your day. You've got to cut your TV hour out of the day or, or something like that. You've got to make sacrifices and you've got to do it because if it's something you really want to do and it's a career that you want and you want to be successful at, that's what you've got to do. And I, I wouldn't have it any other way, personally. I suppose I could cut my second nap out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Start working yeah. a bit more. Yeah. Um, I joke. I am Goes quite... to pub at four instead of three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I am quite disciplined. <laughs> um, that's good. What writing software do you use and how do you approach the structure and editing? I use Scrivener which is ideal for, for my approach. I know some people like it, some people don't. Um, for me, in terms of actually putting a book together, I always start off um, with the kind of the, the elevator pitch, if you like, or, um, you know, that had been you know, almost a paragraph sometimes, which is where I've been going wrong for five years. Um, I then essentially plan out the, the structure of the book. I, I read quite heavily into the, the structure of stories and the theory behind stories and books and, and, and what have you. I'm, I'm a bit of a sort of student of the craft as well. So I, I tend to build out the structure so I know what my midpoint is. I know where the turns and twists are coming in. I then have that skeleton, essentially, and I build the chapters around that. So I, you know, I essentially almost like um, a flow chart, um, and within those chapters, then the beats of you know what happens within the chapters, and it's essentially just kind of starting with that elevator pitch and expanding outwards until I've got um, you know my chapters laid out in Scrivener and the little notes saying what happens in each of them, and it's literally just a case of putting the words on the page. At no point am I going, oh, I don't know what's going to happen next, or am I going to have to come back and change that because I've planned it. And I think if you're aiming to be quite prolific with the writing. You need to plan ahead so that you don't you know, keep writing yourself into holes, coming back and changing things. Um, yeah, so you can get far more books out that way. Yeah. Okay. That's a really good sort of quite methodical approach. So when you sit down to write, the framework's done. You can just enjoy writing up to those hitting the marks effectively. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all of that up until I actually start writing the book, it's all it's it's pure science essentially it's not there's no kind of art in it or staring out of the window it's it's a purely scientific method um uh, i can't get my words out today. Yeah, so, well luckily you're a writer <laughs> yeah so. a methodical <laughs> approach is the word i wanted yeah. and um you know and then the, the the fun in terms of actually you know the, the prose and getting the words down happens happens after that that's when you have a have a bit more fun with the with the science Okay, well, Adam, thank you very much for hosting us. Here we are in your house. I should say we're in uh, Flittick in Bedfordshire, which if you don't know the place, you call it Flitwick because that's spelled, which sounds very Dickensian. <laughs> but it's um, it's not too far from me, uh, 20 miles down the road or so, and uh, it's been a great pleasure. You are the number one self-published author on Amazon today. How does that feel? Uh, yeah, a bit bizarre hearing that. But yeah, technically in the chart, everybody above me at the moment is, um, is either with a, a huge publishing company or, or with uh, with Amazon, with Thomas and Mercer. So, yeah. Well, it's exciting to see it happen. And uh, you're a regular contributor, I know, to the Facebook group as well. And people love following uh, your advice. And we look forward to growing with you, I think, over the next uh, few years. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. What a nice guy, Adam. And uh, when you meet somebody who's been massively successful and they turn out to be a nice guy, it's slightly annoying. No, it's really good. Um, <laughs> we're really pleased for him and it's exciting watching him. And since I recorded that interview, the book has gone to even greater heights and greater strengths. So he has been, I think, as high as number 12 in the overall paid Amazon chart. He has been told by at least one authority that he is the best-selling self-published book of 2016 so far. Um, we've seen pictures of the Apple charts with him at number, I think, four, and J.K. Rowling's Robert Galbraith book at number seven. Everyone's going to screen grab that if it happens to them, aren't they? And... Uh, and yeah, he's he's gone on and on. As I say, he's predicting 1.5 million gross sales uh, of that book this year. And down to earth, methodical, thoughtful about it, and made it work. Yeah, he's he's done fantastically well. So just to kind of round up what we what I said right at the start, if if you want to listen to Adam in a bit more detail and get the chance to ask him questions. You can join him and me. You can ask me questions too if you want to, although, yeah, send them to Adam. <laughs> he'll, he'll do a good job answering them. Um, you can uh, sign up for the, the webinar that we'll be doing on June the 7th, Tuesday, June the 7th, 10 p.m. London, 5 p.m. New York, 2 p.m. L.A. And to sign up, you need to go to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash Adam.
Yeah, so we've set that up uh, so you can sign up there. And so there is a limit on um, sign-ups. It's only a 1,000. I know we've got several thousand download the podcast every week, so there will be a rush for places there. Uh, so get your place. And uh, once you've secured it, you will also get an automatic link for the replay afterwards. Um, and, yeah, just to remind you that the premium course is open. Uh, if you're listening to this at uh, a contemporaneous time, the premium course is open for one of its periodic onboarding of new students. You can check that out at selfpublishingformula.com for all the details. Uh, we're rolling out lots of stuff, actually, over the next couple of weeks, so keep your eyes out and um, make sure you're involved in our Facebook community if you're not already. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So a happy, successful, inspiring story. It's something to think about. Absolutely. So, yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed that, and we'll be back again next week. Yeah, and we'll see you on the 7th of June for that webinar with Adam. Cheers. You've been listening to the Self-Publishing Formula podcast. Visit us at selfpublishingformula.com for more information, show notes, and links on today's topics. You can also sign up for our free video series on using Facebook ads to grow your mailing list. If you've enjoyed the show, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.